India just changed the entire future of the world order by announcing that it has chosen China and not the United States as its future partner. This is going to have some major global ramifications. The reason is simple. The 21st century belongs to Asia, and India is one of the region's most important assets. Just take a look at the IMF's growth forecast for 2024. India leads the world with an impressive 7% growth target. But did you notice what's most interesting about this chart? The top four fastest growing economies in the world are all members of the BRICS alliance. The U.S. government knows Asia is the future, and it's why as early as 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama launched his Pivot to Asia plan. The plan was simple. If the U.S. could build a close relationship with India, it could leverage that relationship to grow American influence throughout the region and hopefully contain China's rise. But of course, this never materialized. No country can possibly contain China's growth. And over the past 10 years, something incredible happened. India, like many countries around the global south, received nothing but empty promises from the U.S. government. India's Prime Minister Modi has now realized that the future of Asia, and India for that matter, is with China. Meanwhile, America has chosen to enter a new Cold War with China, which only raises the stakes even more. The U.S. desperately needs India's help if it is going to increase its influence in Asia. But at the recent BRICS summit, India's Prime Minister Modi not only doubled down on relations with China, but also Russia. There is something major going down behind the scenes, as Bloomberg reports that India has now surged to become Russia's number two supplier of restricted technology. I'm going to break down exactly why India is shifting closer to both China and Russia in today's video, but the United States is in a rough spot. Geopolitically, 2024 has been a nightmare. The country's national debt is spiraling out of control, and yet the government continues to fund two of the most unpopular and expensive wars in American history. And no matter who wins the election next week, these problems aren't going anywhere. But the advantages for India choosing a pathway forward with BRICS and doing more business with China and Russia are so strikingly clear that India making this pivot was only a matter of time. So let's dive into the reasons driving India's choice and explore what it means for the future of global power dynamics. But first, let me introduce you to today's video sponsor, Kalshi, which plays right into the 2024 US election and is the first legal exchange where you can bet on any event, including but not limited to elections. The platform was invented by two MIT engineers. And I really love it because I know most of you who watch this channel are investors, and this is a legal platform where you can bet on real events in the market. For example, do you think the Fed will cut rates at its November 7th meeting? Over 85% of people are betting they will be cut by 25 basis points. How many deliveries will Tesla deliver this quarter? 88% of people feel it's going to be over 470,000. Or what about the price of Bitcoin this year? Most people are again bullish to see it peak over 75K. The most popular bet right now is of course the US election, which trades in real time and the odds are constantly changing. At the time of this recording, 56% of bettors feel Trump is going to win. A $100 bet for Trump winning would be worth $175, while a $100 bet for Kamala could win you $227. Kalshi is already being used by hundreds of thousands of people and has facilitated over $1 billion worth of trades. Simply go to kalshi.com slash Cyrus Jansen and the first 500 traders who deposit $100 will get a free $20 credit. To learn more, simply click the link below. We're going to start off today's analysis by revisiting the 2024 BRIC Summit because this event will have profound effects on the future of our world. Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam all join BRICS as strategic partners. And this means that BRICS, already dominant in Asia due to China and India's membership, will become the dominant force of influence in Asia the U.S. government so desperately wanted to obtain. But probably the biggest storyline from BRICS 2024 is Modi and Xi coming together and settling China and India's territorial disputes along their border. This is actually a major deal because for years, this was the number one argument from the West. How could BRICS actually be a threat to the G7 or even influence the world when two of the founding members are fighting alongside their border? That's a fair point, but now that dispute is resolved. What's stopping India and China from building an unstoppable relationship in the future? Frankly speaking, the growth of BRICS 2024 is a beacon of hope for developing countries around the world. After decades of domination under the so-called rules-based international order, developing nations finally have an alternative. 18 new countries have applied for BRICS membership and 13 new partner countries were added to the alliance this year, proving that BRICS future remains bright. With this rapid development, India no longer needs to rely solely on the U.S. government, and India's pivot to Asia was summed up brilliantly 
and this Asian Times article entitled, Why Modi's Shifting India Away from the U.S. Towards China. Inside the article, it states the truth. The first and second terms of Modi's government have marked one of the worst decades in India's history in regard to international relations. During this period, India has incurred unprecedented opportunity costs while experimenting with international and geopolitical strategies. In his third term, Modi is looking to reverse the course by shifting from the U.S. to China. When Modi became India's prime minister, the U.S. government sold him on the idea that India's economy would grow exponentially by adopting a trade relationship similar to the one the U.S. had with China. High-ranking U.S. officials frequently asserted that many high-profile American companies would relocate their factories from China to India. On paper, it seemed like the perfect plan. The U.S. government would love nothing more than to decouple U.S. companies from China and relocate them to India. To further help this initiative, Modi appointed Jai Shankar, an aggressive China hawk, as foreign minister, hoping that his pro-American stance would help attract U.S. investment and technology. But remarkably, this shift never happened, and to this day, U.S. investment in India remains minimal. We often hear in the media that India is the next China, and one day, India will replace China as the world's factory. But the truth is that in terms of quality, infrastructure, and supply chains, no country can compete with China. As a result, instead of increased U.S. investment, major American companies like Ford, General Motors, and Harley-Davidson all exited the Indian market during this period. Most recently, you've probably heard that Foxconn, the Taiwanese company who manufactures iPhones in China, would be reducing its footprint in China and start manufacturing iPhones in India instead. But once again, the data shows clearly why the majority of iPhones will still be made in China for many years to come. Around 50% of the iPhones assembled in India did not pass quality control standards, and once again, this resulted in more U.S. companies shifting away from India. India will not be the next China, and instead of following China's footsteps and trying to become the world's factory, India saw another opportunity for development and growth in early 2022. Take a look at this chart from Bloomberg that shows how over the past three years, India has surged to become Europe's top fuel supplier. At the start of 2022, India's fuel imports from Russia was almost zero, but that number has increased over over time, to the point where India now imports more than 2 million barrels of Russian oil per day. This is why we study geopolitics, because there are always opportunities in the market. When Russia invaded Ukraine in early 2022, the entire EU stopped buying Russian gas and oil as they stood in support of Ukraine. But there was only one problem here. The entire EU economy depends on cheap oil and gas from Russia, and without it, it makes European industries less competitive. India is the world's largest democracy, and once again was pressured by the US government to align with the US and NATO and condemn Russia. But to this day, India has remained neutral and instead saw an opportunity to purchase Russian fuel at a bargain price. The most incredible thing about this entire situation is that the EU still buys Russian oil to this day. They simply just buy the same gas and oil at a premium and use India as an intermediary. Norwegian political professor Glenn Deason commented on this phenomenon. The strange economic death of Europe, buying Russian energy through India as an intermediary at an added cost economic suicide by virtual signaling. European leaders stay silent, do not address competing national interests, and do not even diversify economic dependencies sufficiently as they pride themselves on upholding the solidarity of liberal democracies. Truly amazing. In addition to the lucrative business of reselling Russian oil and gas to Europe, India has also found another opportunity, and as this Bloomberg article reports, is now Russia's number two supplier of restricted technology. This is quite an amazing development as Indian exports of restricted items such as microchips, circuits, and machine tools surpassed $60 million in both April and May, about double from earlier months this year, and leaped to $95 million in July. This means that almost a fifth of sensitive technology that goes into Russia's military industrial complex got there via India. India's shift towards China and Russia over the U.S. at the BRICS summit represents a turning point, not only in India's foreign policy, but also in the global balance of power. After years of unmet promises and strained partnerships, India has chosen a new path that prioritizes its economic future and regional autonomy. Modi's pivot underscores India's desire to be treated as an equal partner, not a pawn, while signaling to the world that the age of one-sided alliances is ending. With BRICS rising as a viable alternative for developing nations, the question is no longer just about who will lead the world and how the world will be led. This decision could shape the next decade of global politics as India redefines its role and forges 
chooses a path that aligns with its long-term interests and ambitions. Everyone, as always, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube. I thank you for all your support, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next episode soon.